The more troubleshooting I do for folks in Lightroom, the more I realize that a lot of the problems stem from how the photos were imported into Lightroom. So today I'm going to show you what I consider to be the best practices to get your photos into Lightroom. I'm going to show you some of the most common mistakes to avoid. And by the end of this video, you are going to know exactly what I consider to be the smartest and easiest way to import your photos into Lightroom. So let's get started. Now, Lightroom is a powerhouse, so when we, from the library module here, go to Import, we are greeted with a plethora of choices. Now, my goal is always to simplify anytime I can, so the first simplification we're going to look at is importing with a RAW file. And we're going to assume everybody is photographing in RAW for this example because when you are importing from RAW, you can copy your photo as a DNG or copy. And what I find is a lot of people have one or two of these chosen and they don't quite realize that there is a difference. Copy is a DNG, and without going too far into a deep dive into DNG, it stands for digital negative and it is Adobe's open lossless raw image file format. So basically it's taking your camera's raw file, so this is Canon CR3, if you're Nikon it's NEF, it's taking that ma camera manufacturer's proprietary raw file and converting it into the Adobe version of a RAW file. And the reason it does this is because then it can contain all of the editing information within that one file, and your edits are synced seamlessly across all of the Adobe applications. This is helpful if you are working in multiple different applications. In theory, it can be a smaller file size depending on if your camera brand manufacturer has lossless compression, or it may not be depending on, again, what your camera brand is. So the file size may be smaller, but you also could potentially lose some of your camera specific proprietary data. So active delighting or Nikon's picture control profile, Sony's pixel shift technology. If that information isn't recognized, it can be lost when you convert to a DNG. So those are some of the risks associated as well. And there's other ones. Again, this isn't a deep dive, but the last thing is that DNG is a one-way street. So once you convert to DNG, you cannot go back. So if you lose that little bit of information, you can't gain it back. For this reason, this is why I always copy my photos to the catalog. And what this is doing is when I have an SD card in connected to the camera, it's going to take those photos from the SD card. It's going to copy them to the location that I pick on the destination panel and it is going to add them to the Lightroom catalog. And that is 99% of the time what is happening. I'm coming back from an excursion near the Smoky Mountains and I want to add these photos to the Lightroom catalog and save them to their permanent location. Now, you also have move and add and these are deselected because you can't do those functions from an SD card. Thank you, Adobe. But let's say I go to my desktop here and I select a folder with some images right here. Now I have move and add. And the two differences here is move is actually going to take the photos from this folder where it is on my desktop and move it to where I designate on the destination panel. It's going to add them to the catalog as well. If I hit add, it is going to keep the photos exactly where I have them and just add them to the catalog. And that is why when I clicked it, the destination panel disappeared. So again, you can do these if you happen to already have copied your photos to your XD or external hard drive or they're on your computer. But for the majority of the time, we're importing from an SD card and I prefer to copy. You can copy as a DNG. Just make sure that you're conscious of which one you're choosing and you stay consistent. Now, where are we copying those photos to? That leads us to the destination panel here. And that is probably the biggest hiccup that people have. This panel isn't necessarily intuitive, so don't be necessarily frustrated. I have screwed this up a few times. I think everyone has, it's just kind of a rite of passage. But there's an easier way, and let me show you the way. We are actually gonna exit out of the dialog box for a minute. Now this tip was brought to me by the wonderful Michael Fry. 
If you don't know Michael Fry, he is a wonderful human photographer and educator, so please check him out. So thank you, Michael, for sharing this tip with your audiences, and now I'm going to share it even further because it is that good. We're back in the library module. We are in the folders panel, and within the folders panel, this is my structure, my folder structure as I have set up. So for each of my trips, they have a parent folder for the year and subfolders for each of my trips. I want to add my latest Smokies trip to this 2023 folder. So I will click on the 2023 parent folder. I will go up to the top where the plus sign is and click the little down arrow here and hit add subfolder. I will name my subfolder Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Whoops, there we go. And I'm gonna hit create. So now I have created a folder exactly in the structure as I want it. I can see what it's gonna look like when it comes back into Lightroom. I click on that and all you have to do is right click and down here you have import to this folder. We click that, the dialog box appears and we don't have to mess with the destination folder because it has already set it. It's like those old infomercials where you can, the rotisserie chicken, set it and forget it. Now the only change, we're actually not gonna set it. We're setting it now. We are going to change, I don't want this by date. I just need this into one folder. So all of the images are gonna go into one folder. You can choose how you wish to have your photos displayed, but all the smoky photos together is just fine by me. So that is my second tip. And my third biggest tip when importing is to scroll all the way up. And there's this little checkbox here that says, don't import suspected duplicates. Please have that checked. This isn't gonna get you right at first. Um, sometimes what happens is this box gets unchecked by an import. And then when people go to import again, Adobe or Lightroom saves your last import settings and then they start importing. And you don't know how much time passes before this box was unchecked. And it doesn't get you at first, but eventually, at some point, you're going to get that exclamation, part, exclamation point in Lightroom, and it's going to say that there's a conflict, and you can't edit or export the photo, and you won't know what happened, and chances are it's a duplicated photo in your catalog. So keep this box checked, and what it does is Lightroom, before you import the photos, is going to look at the capture date and time, the file name, and say your aperture, your shutter speed, your focal length, and it is going to say, wait a minute, if it sees that all of that information matches because it's a duplicated photo and it doesn't want to get a messy catalog. Now I can and do talk about all the other options associated with importing your photos into Lightroom in my full Let's Get Organized in Lightroom course. So if you can't wait for another video or you want all the details to my full workflow, you can check that out there and I'll link it in the description. But even without the course, if you follow these three tips today, you're going to make importing your photos into Lightroom a whole lot easier and a much smarter way to do it. So first, make sure that you are always consistent with how you put your photos into Lightroom. I prefer to always be copying my photos. I always have the don't import suspected duplicate box checked. You have no idea how hard that is to say on camera. And <laughs> I always use that trick from the folders panel to right click and say import into this folder. So I always know where my photos are going when they go into Lightroom. So I hope you found these tips helpful and cheers to a happy Lightroom experience.